Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel, my name's Conan. Today we're going to look at all of the reverbs on offer in the MPC. We're going to go through each one, one by one. I'm going to give you a few examples, how I would use the reverb. I'm going to go through the settings. There's a lot to get through, so take your time, pause, return, record it onto VHS if you want to be really old school. Let's jump in. So before we really get stuck in, I want to briefly explain my ethos when it comes to reverb. There's a lot to cover as well, so I am kind of referring to cues in case you wonder why I keep looking down here. First of all, I mostly use reverbs as a send return effect. And what I mean by that is I will have a send and return set up, I will have a reverb on it, and I will send multiple sources to that reverb. Occasionally I will use a reverb as an insert effect where I will place a reverb just on a snare drum or just on a vocal or just on a single instrument. But generally I tend to use it as a send and return. The reason why I do that is because the way that I use reverb is I like to give it I, I like to give a mix a sense of space and width and depth. And a good way that you can do that is a send and return, sending multiple sources, and you put them all in the same space and it creates some cohesiveness to the mix. But you can also do that with buses. If you just want to do it with the drums and put them in the same space, you could use it as an insert effect on a bus. You can do it with the vocals to put them in the same kind of space. Percussion is another thing that's really good to, to use that for as well. But basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take what is often an instrument or a vocal or some drums that recorded in a very flat room and give it some life, give it some sort of natural reverb, add some space to it, some cohesiveness. Occasionally I will use what I call a statement reverb. I don't know if that's a thing or if it's just me who calls it that. What I mean by that is it will be a reverb that can really be heard in the mix. I'm saying, hey, I'm a reverb, listen to me, I'm part of this mix. And that would be things like uh, Vangelis Blade Runner soundtrack, the way he used that really, really long Lexicon 224 reverb. George Michael's engineer used uh, a particular style of reverb on a lot of his ballads, which had really long, crispy reverbs, which filled a lot of space. Um, so that's another way of using a kind of statement reverb. The trouble is with reverbs is they're notorious for muddying up a mix. So generally, you need to use them subtly, or if you do use them, you are using a lot of it, then you need to have control of it. You need to have maybe add some EQ or use some filters, um, etc. Unless, of course, you're working on a very, very sparse track and you kind of want to fill space up, in which case using lots of reverb is a really, really good way to kind of fill the track out. So before we really, really get stuck in, I'm just going to show you quickly how to set up a insert effect reverb on the MPC and then also show you how to set up a send and return reverb. So when you set up an insert effect in the MPC, you choose your program or your pad. In this case, we're gonna choose a pad. Make sure this is pad selected here. I've selected the pad, AO5. Go into my insert effects. I choose my reverb, let's go for spring reverb. And there we have the reverb on pad five. Now remember, when with insert effects, you wanna use the wet dry mix. So if I have it all the way over here, there's gonna be no reverb at all and then I can just blend some wet reverb in. Let's take that down a little bit. There we go. And that's an insert effect. Let's come out of there, get rid of that, go into the main screen again. So if I want to set up a send return effect, you've got your program, you go into track mix. Here we have programs selected here. I've got my program selected. If I go into returns, you have four returns here where you can set up different effects, etc. As a template, I normally have a reverb on return one, a delay on uh, return two, three and four I'll say for maybe a compressor if I want to do parallel compression or some other effects. But one and two, pretty much always on my DAW and in my MPC, I have a, a reverb and a delay setup. So we've got air reverb on return one, there we go. Now remember, if you're doing a send and return, you want the mix set to 100% wet. You can add some dry in if you want, but there's not really any point because that kind of defies the whole point of having a send and return. So have mix, make sure mix is set to 100. The reason why I say that is because a lot of the presets will be set to 50%. 
So remember when you add a reverb, if you're going to have it as a send and return, ensure that you've set the mix to 100%. And now we have that set up. We can come back out, go to our program, and then if you go into send, you've got four options for the four different send returns. So we're on send one, send one. Let's add a bit of volume. And we can send that program to the send return. You can choose how much you want to send to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each reverb in order that they are in the MPC. And the first one is the non-lin reverb. Nonlin Reverb is an emulation of a reverb unit from the 80s. It was a preset called Nonlin 2, which means non-linear. A very, very famous preset. It was used on a ton of tracks. You'll know the sound straight away. In the Air Tonight, Phil Collins, Peter Gabriel, just tons of 80s stuff. And obviously, because that whole sound has become very popular again now, a lot of people are using the Nonlin Reverb in their tracks. I've demonstrated it on a snare because that's probably where I would use it. That's where you'll know it from. And because it's just on a snare, I'm using it as an insert effect rather than a send return effect. So let's just go into it. This is the snare. As you can hear, it's a reverb with a gate on it. So as the decay falls below a certain volume level, it cuts it off. Really famous sound. That's a DMX snare drum from the 80s, which you all know. Let's go into the settings. Very, very simple. What is really cool actually is that you've got the gated, but you can also do reverse here as well. So it's basically playing it in a, in a reverse way. Another real well-known 80s kind of effect. But we'll just look at the effects, uh, the, the controls rather. With most, almost all reverb plugins that you're gonna get, you're gonna get a pre-delay. And basically what a pre-delay does is it's kind of setting up a gap between your original source sound and when that source sound would hit a wall and bounce back and you would hear the you would hear the reflection so it's kind of creating a space it's emulating a space and that's the whole point of it so you hit the snare drum the sound travels it hits a wall and it comes back at you that pre-delay that you've defined would be emulating the, the amount of time and distance that it comes back i don't know what the exact numbers are I don't know how fast sound travels, I probably should, uh, considering I've been doing this for nearly 40 years. But what I do know is that pre-delay basically creates a gap in simple terms between your source and the reverb or echo or delay coming back to you. So let's just demonstrate that. At the moment it's on zero and I'll take it to its absolute extreme. So you now you can hear there's a gap. So I hit the snare, it runs away from me, hits the wall, comes back. There's your delay, that's your pre-delay. So, you know, I mean, it's subjective how you, how you would use that. With something like the gated, I would probably have maybe, I'd probably have a little bit of a pre-delay. The dry delay in this case is the delay, if I'll show you, it's probably the best if I just show you what it actually does. It's creating a delay from you actually hitting the pad to start with. And so you can almost push the actual source sound into the delay. Kind of like that. So the way that you could probably use that would be on something like a vocal. So you would hear the sound of the gated reverb or the reverse reverb or whatever, and then you would hear the actual vocal. So that would be a really, really cool special effect. Time is exactly what it says. It, it sets how long the reverb is, basically. Not something that you probably do with a gated reverb because that sounds pretty terrible. About 250, I think, which is where it was set. Just before I go any further, I just want to point out with the presets that you get on reverbs, presets are not something that I'd normally say to people go to straight away, you know, with EQs, with compressors, things like that, because generally a preset would be a preset that was 
built around a particular source, a particular instrument, a particular situation. So it's not going to work on your instrument in that situation that you're in. But reverb presets, the reason why they're good is because they're generally a preset that's emulating a particular reverb, a particular plate reverb, a particular non-linear reverb, etc. So they are actually pretty good places to start with um, when you're working with reverbs to have a look at the presets. And the presets that Akai include on the NPCs, there's some really, really good ones on there. Get down to the mix. The mix is pretty straightforward. It's basically when you have it as an insert, it will give you an amount of wet signal and an amount of dry signal. So if I wanted just a little bit of reverb, I would take it all the way to the left, or all the way down in percentage rather. Can only hear a little bit. And if I just wanted the wet signal, no dry, I would take it all the way to 100%. So that's a subjective thing, obviously. What I will say is that you would use that more likely in an insert effect situation. In a send return situation, you would generally have mix set to 100 because you're going to have the send and return reverb on its own channel. So you can leave that at 100 basically when you do that. So bear that in mind because a lot of the presets on Akai will have the mix set of 50. So remember that if you do put that on a send and return, check that, make sure you put it to 100 percent otherwise you're going to be letting some of the dry signal through on the send and return as well diffusion generally diffusion is what we would call in reverb on reverb we would call it the lush the luscious knob the luscious switch or whatever you know what it does is it creates a kind of thickness and and kind of weight and luscious lush lushness lusciousness to the reverb i'm making words up as i go along here so but in this case, on this particular non-lin reverb, and I'm not exactly sure why, it kind of doesn't really do that. It kind of creates a kind of granular sound if you reduce it. Now I can sort of hear the reverb in grains. Take it all the way up, and the reverb's much smoother. Let's take it to 100% mixed, and you can hear what I mean a bit better. Now if I take that all the way down, sounds grittier doesn't it so diffusion in this case is kind of well, actually it is the case in a lot of reverbs it, it, it's kind of a way of smoothing the reverb out so if you take it all the way down this one you get a quite a gritty kind of sound then width self-explanatory spreads it out in the stereo field reverbs are really really good if you spread them wide because it can quite often give a nice sound to a mono drum, you give it some side information, uh, a mono vocal, you give it some side information. So it's really, really useful for, for rever with reverbs to pan them, you know, give them a lot of width. And, you know, and also the whole, one of the main reasons why I personally use reverbs is to give some space and some width. So using width, you know, all the way, not necessarily all the way, maybe 75% your choice in the mix. EQ, again, pretty self-explanatory. As I said earlier, reverbs are notorious for muddying things up and making mixes sound a bit too messy and confused. So a thing that I will almost always do on reverbs is have an EQ straight afterwards. So it's very handy if you do have some filters built, built in. Here we have a low cut and a high cut. There's an old trick called the Abbey Road Reverb trick, which basically says roll off anything below 600 hertz and anything above 10K. That's a pretty good rule of thumb. It's not, a, it's not a rule that you have to stick to. Uh, it can change for certain instruments. Some vocals will sound better if you take it all the way down to 6K. Some drums you can take all the way down to 3K. And sometimes you want a bit of weight to the reverb. So don't automatically go 600 below nothing, 10K upwards nothing. You know, it's, it's totally a choice. I mean, for instance, as I mentioned earlier on, George Michael's engineer, his reverbs definitely had a lot of high end to them so i doubt he was rolling off the the eq on the reverbs in that case so a very very basic but very very useful reverb on the air non lin so next up we've got air reverb and i'm probably going to go into the most depth on this one because it has the most controls and if i explain the controls in this they're relevant to the later reverbs as well so i've got this set up as a send return which is generally what i use air reverb for so i have my program if i go into track mix Here's my program here, go to returns. On return one, I have air reverb set up. So we have two pages. We have the reverb section and then we have an EQ section. I'll describe 
all of the settings in fa fairly detailed. Pre-delay, fairly self-explanatory. We'll use the snare again. Nice on a vocal. Take it down. So it's creating that space again between the initial source, it hitting the wall and then coming back at you. With mix, as a send and return effect, I would generally leave that on 100%. As an insert effect, as I described earlier, you can choose how much wet and how much dry. As this is send and return, I've got that on 100%. We'll leave these two for now, the room size and time. We'll go into early reflections. Easiest way to describe early reflection would be when you make the initial sound, it travels, it hits the wall, it comes back at you. That's your early reflection. What's really great about this section here, what I really like, well, firstly, you have a whole bunch of different rooms that you can emulate. There's loads to choose from. We'll stick to small studio for now. Down at the bottom here, you can mix in how much of your early reflection that you have, which is just your single reflection, and then how much tail you have. So all the way to the left, just early reflection. I can demonstrate this by turning that up. So you kind of have a slap back, no reverb. Then you can bring in the actual tail, or you can get rid of the early reflection completely and just have the tail. You can change the length as well of the early reflection, which is really useful. So let's take that back to 50 just for now. Moving to the reverb section, pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can spread out the input or the output. So it's just giving some more stereo width to the sound. Really useful to give yourself more side information. Vocals, for instance. <laughs> So quite often with a mono sound, a trick that you would use to give that mono sound a bit more space is to have the mono sound front and centre obviously, and then give it some side information with a bit of reverb. So you can do that here with the output width and the input width. The delay, I'm not really exactly sure what the point of it is, but I'll show you what it does. It's kind of like a, again, like the slapback. I'm not really sure what the point of it is. I tend to leave it on zero, but it could be useful for special effects when you start bringing longer time into it, bigger room sizes, etc. Well, we'll leave that there for now. Please feel free to experiment with it. And if you find any really, really good use for it, please write in the comments below. Moving on to this room area here, ambience and density. This is kind of, ambience is a way of controlling the shape of the, of the reverb or the initial reflection. And I'll show you what I mean. If you have it all the way to the left, let's take that up a little bit and I think we can. Okay, if you listen to the shape of the reflection, the reverb, I take it all the way this way. It's smoother, so it's kind of rounded off the transient of the early reflection. So you have basically a transient control to your early reflection there. Let's just show you again. That's more slapping you in the face. And that's almost as if the walls are made a padded cell or etc. I mean, they're not, because you wouldn't get a reflection like that, but. It's a nice way to control the transient of the reflection. Density is kind of like diffusion in the non-lin. It's the lusciousness, the thickness of the, uh, of the reverb, of the tail. And I'll show you what I mean. If I take that all the way down, it kind of sounds a bit more fluttery. And then if I take it all the way up, it smooths the tail. So think of that as a smoothness control. Take it down, take it up. Let's go back across to the left and we'll show you how you can control the actual tail. We'll go for the time first, pretty obvious. The longer the time's gonna be, the bigger the room that you're emulating, the bigger the space, if you, if you like. So this can be really cool for getting kind of accurate emulations of room sizes, but it can also be used as a special effect. 
Van Gelis, one of my favourites, used this on the Lexicon 224. I'm fairly certain it was the 224. The Infinity Reverb, very, very famous way of doing it. And it's, it's a great way to finish a track or as a special effect. And you're basically freezing the tail. But you can have it at something like, you know, 28, let's say. So, you know, very, very good special effect. Uh, I love that Infinity Reverb Vangelis thing. It just, uh, I, 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 every single time I, I want to make a track, I want to put that in there. It's just, but I, but I don't. Room size, again, fairly explanatory. And you can hear what kind of effect that has. So you can imagine, that's like you're stuck in a really small toilet. And that's as if you're in a cathedral. So let's just take that down to a normal kind of size, normal time. And then we'll move into the last part, which is the important EQ. As I said, reverbs are notorious for muddying up mixes, making things sound a bit busy and a bit confused. So this is really useful to have an EQ built in. What I always used to do in the olden days, uh, and I still do now if the plugin hasn't got an EQ built in, is I will run an EQ straight after the reverb to get some control over it, get rid of some of the low end, some of the muddiness, and roll off some of the highs as well. But you can do that here. So let's, let's do the old Abbey Road again, 10 kilohertz, take that up to 600 and you'll get a nice clean reverb tail. Maybe take that back a little bit to leave a bit of body in there. So that's what you've got down at the bottom there, just cuts. Then this is really, really interesting, the frequency and the time, really nice for creating kind of strange, out of this world kind of effects. And you can choose a frequency and the amount of time as well. So let's just take that back to there, to 2K, and bring this up. And you kind of create a splash effect. So that's really nice. So you can emulate all kind of plate reverbs with that. This is also really nice as well. With the low end, you can kind of create a cheap sounding sort of plate, which will give a kind of boom almost in the reverb. You know, if you're inside like a big metal tube and you'd hit the side, you get that kind of reverb sound. And I can't really think of a time that I would use that in the mix, but it's good for a special effect if you're doing sound for TV or film, that kind of thing. So that's, that's really, really useful. You know, a lot of the EQs that you get on reverbs are just high, low cuts. With this, you have a lot more control over emulating different styles of plates and, and you know, really, really useful. Air reverb for me, is the is my go-to reverb in the MPC because I can do so much with it, you've got so much control over it. So moving on to the air spring reverb, one of my favorites. I love spring reverbs. I have it set up as a send return again. So obviously, as you can see, I've got it on 100% mix. Spring reverbs are really useful for, if you want to emulate that kind of 60s, 70s funk sound, a lot of drums had that kind of spring reverb sound on it, guitars, even vocals, just purely because some of the smaller studios couldn't afford the really expensive plate reverbs. So spring reverbs in a lot of guitar amps, Fender, that kind of thing, they would go to, they were the only reverbs that a lot of smaller studios could afford. So. Like I said, I mean, I've actually made a video on mixing drums and I used a spring reverb to kind of emulate that 60s, 70s kind of funk sound. So I'll run through the controls really, really quickly. It's very, very basic. So you hear it's got that kind of spring reverb sound. Uh, Pre-delay, again, self-explanatory. It's lovely, it's got that real kind of brigade, chorus-y kind of uh, dub sound, love it. Time again, self-explanatory. 
Obviously, it doesn't go up a long, long way because spring reverbs generally don't. Generally, on a spring reverb, you'd probably have shorter anyway and a shorter delay. So, little bit of a delay. Diffusion, as I explained earlier, is the sort of lushness of the of the reverb. So in this case, it does exactly the same thing. So you can hear kind of a bit of grain to the tail. And then if I take that all the way up, it smooths it right out. Width, again, gives you some stereo field. Really, really useful on the spring reverb, actually. And create a bit of pre-delay as well. This really, really gives a sound or a drum bass or some vocals a lot of space. Let's take that up to about 50. So you can hear that go out. Let's try it on a vocal. <laughs> And then, I mean, this is a perfect example as well. You can hear from that vocal and the muddiness that was created instantly why having a low cut on something like this is really, really useful. So again, Akai adding a bit of reverb, a bit of EQ option to the reverb is really, really useful. So now, if I use the vocal, you will hear that that muddiness. <laughs> cleaned it right up. Let's take it up a little bit higher and listen to how clean the reverb is and then I'll take it all the way down again and you'll hear, obviously not in the context of the mix, but you will be able to imagine with that muddiness built up with the reverb how that would busy up a mix and make things just sound a bit messy in this kind of low mids area. So let's listen to it nice and clean first. <laughs> Okay, and let's take that all the way down, get rid of it altogether. So you suddenly have all that mud. So really, really useful to have that EQ option inside the actual reverb, so you don't have to add an EQ afterwards. Really, really nice on breaks. So now we move on to the older reverbs that Akai put in the MPC. Uh, they're not part of the air collection. We've, we're done with the air collection. We're now moving on to these ones. You have the reverb in gate, the reverb out gate, reverb large, reverb large two, reverb medium, reverb small. They all have the same controls pretty much. And I think probably the best way for me to show you these is just kind of run through them really, really quickly using the sounds that I already have. The gate one, that you have the in-gate and you have the out-gate, and basically the difference in the in-gate and the out-gate is you control the reverb as a gated reverb again. So with gate in, you'd bring the threshold down. You have the same controls, we'll take that to 100% wet because it's a send return. Pre-delay, same as normal, let's take that down. Early reflection, that's the volume of the early reflection. Density and diffusion are pretty much the same as the other ones, the smoothness and the lushness of the reverb. Let's make that a bit smoother. Decay, obviously the length. Let's take that diffusion down a little bit and density down a little bit. Low cut and high cut, exactly as, the, as you'd think. I want to get rid of a bit of mud on that reverb. And I want a bit of warmth to it. A little bit longer. You see, so very, very quickly with these ones, rather than the air ones, you can just, because 
if you learn exactly what these controls do, you can dial in your own reverbs really, really, really quickly. If we come out of here and we go into the, the reverb out gate, here you will hear that you can, it's the opposite. So now you're getting that gated reverb like the non-lin. Let's keep that 100%. the only reflection down. Density on this would be nice. Diffusion to be smoother. Get rid of some of the bottom end and roll off a little bit at the top. So a nice subtle non-lin kind of style gated reverb. So that's really useful. That one I'd probably use more than the the reverb in gate, to be honest with you, because this is a nice way to kind of design your own non-lin reverb, which is very, very popular, as you know, at the moment. So we'll go back up to... Now, the large two and the large one, I guess, uh, I think, as far as I know, the only difference is the amount of CPU. So I would imagine that with the, the large two has less CPU, uses less CPU, so maybe isn't not as accurate, accurate would be the wrong word, but maybe it's not as lush, it doesn't sound as smooth. Um, I, there is a little bit of a difference, but they're basically the same thing. They're just, they just use a slightly different amount of CPU. So again here, you can see it's the same as the gate ones, but without the gate control. It's a send and return, so I wanna take that up to 100. I have all the same effects. This is your standard kind of larger haul. So, let's take the early reference down as well. Density down, diffusion up. Get rid of the low end, get rid of the mud. So this is a nice vocal reverb. As you can see, I mean, I've dialed that in pretty quick, but I'm th I think you'd understand from me explaining the controls in air reverb what I've done. Just literally changed the diffusion and density, just balanced them out a little bit, kept it a little bit smooth, not had the decay too long, rolled off a little bit of the high end, but because it's a vocal and maybe I want that glisteny kind of George Michael style, don't roll off too much, get rid of the mud with the low cut. Click, add a little bit of pre-delay. I always like adding a little bit of pre-delay to reverb because it gives it a little bit of a groove and you can change the groove of an entire track, especially on drums, by changing the pre-delay. Listening as you're doing it, it can add a groove to a track completely, uh, almost a swing. So that's your reverb large. And you know, without going into too much detail, medium and the small are pretty much the same, but you're just changing the size of the room that's being emulated. Now with drums, the small is excellent. It's a really, really nice way to, to put drums in the same room as each other. So let's add a little bit of pre-delay. Actually, let's take that down. Density down, diffusion up, smooth. Decay down a little bit. Bit of high cut, bit of low cut. So that's a nice kind of small space kind of reverb to use with drums. <laughs> I personally tend to prefer to steer away from smaller reverbs on vocals because it makes the vocalist sound like they're singing inside a tub. But it's really nice on sounds with a hard hitting track, you know, with a hard attack, a big transients, um, to add a bit of natural reverb to them. And the medium one, you know, again, just switching to the medium one quickly. Do, do, 
It's nice and vocals. And it's still good on drums. But again, with the same controls. And by learning how the controls are, yes, you can go to your presets, but by knowing the controls, learning what the controls do, very, very basic, but very, very quickly with these, you can just use your ears, which is actually what I like about these ones over the air ones is these are just ear ones. You look at the controls and you dial in the reverb, almost shut your eyes. I mean, you, you can't shut your eyes, but you could if you use a Q-Links, which I keep forgetting to use. But you can almost shut your eyes and just use your ears and dial in exactly how you want that reverb to sound, which is, you know, really, really nice. I mean, it's just such a, a great selection of reverbs to have in the MPC. So there you have it, a general breakdown of all of the reverbs on offer in the MPC. For me, reverb is an effect that you can use to really finish off your track. It can make or break a mix. Too much reverb and it can be a muddy mess and not enough, it can sound dry and a bit disconnected. But if you get the reverb just right in the mix, it can give it that real pro finish sound. It can give you depth, it can give you width, it can give you space, it can help you emulate a particular era or a particular sound, and just overall give you that real kind of finish sound. And you have all that you need in the MPC to do that. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing, mastering, and MPC tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Until next time.